Everybody loves a polynomial or function that generates a lot of prime numbers, which means that life is very hard as n to the power 4 minus 20 n squared plus 4. I would not wish for my worst enemies to be reborn as this quartic polynomial. As we'll show today, n to the 4 minus 20 n squared plus 4 is composite for every integer value of n, which means it's it's not interesting at all. Imagine that, while well, some other polynomials will generate a bunch of prime numbers for integer inputs, this one only ever outputs composites. Of course, coming up with a polynomial that only gives composite outputs for integer inputs is not a difficult thing to do. For example, for any integer polynomial p of n, we could create a composite polynomial, so to speak, by just squaring this so that it is always non-negative, then multiply it by a number like 5 so that it's always a multiple of 5, and then add 10 so that it's always at least the second multiple of 5, so it's always a composite number. Of course, there's nothing special about 5 and 10. We could do this with any integer a and 2a, and thus construct a polynomial that always gives composite outputs with integer inputs. Though it's pretty easy to see why these polynomials would always give composite numbers it's not necessarily obvious that's the case for this one. So pause the video and give the problem a try if you like. This problem is from Problem Solving Through Problems by Lauren C. Larson. Not to be confused with Ron Larson, the author of several popular textbooks such as Calculus. To solve this problem, it is of course important to know what a composite number is. For our purposes, a composite integer is an integer that's divisible by something other than one itself and the negatives. Often composite numbers are taken to be positive integers, but for our purposes that's not going to make sense because, for example, if we plug n equals 1 into this polynomial, we get 1 to the power of 4 minus 20 times 1 squared plus 4. And this is negative 15. It's composite in the traditional sense, except for the fact that it's negative, we're just going to consider this as composite for the sake of this problem. For example, it's divisible by negative 3 and positive 5, so we would call this a composite integer, in contrast to an integer like negative 7, which is only divisible by 1 itself and the negatives of those numbers, negative 1 and positive 7. So this would not be composite because its only factors are 1 itself and the negatives, whereas this number is composite because it has factors other than 1 itself and the negatives. Anyhow, of course, it comes down to divisors or factors. So the first thing we would probably try to do to show that this is composite when n is any integer is to try to factor this polynomial. A composite number has to have factors other than one in itself and the negatives, so let's see if we can factor this thing. This polynomial by itself isn't a perfect square, so we can't factor it in that way. However, a difference of squares may be promising. If we wanted to change the constant, that four, so that we had a perfect square, we would have to write n to the power of four minus 20 n squared, and then half of negative 20 is negative 10, squared is 100. So we would need the constant to be plus 100. This is a perfect square, but then to adjust it so that we're not actually changing the original polynomial, we would need to subtract 96. 100 minus 96 would give us that four back. Unfortunately though, this isn't a difference of squares. We've made this a perfect square. It's n squared minus 10 squared, but 96 is not a square, so this isn't going to work. Well, instead of adjusting the constant to get a perfect square, let's try adjusting this next term, the coefficient of n squared. We could change it so that that middle term is plus 4n squared. Then that constant of plus 4 would work out fine, and we'd have to subtract 24n squared so that in the end, everything is the same as the original polynomial. Now we've made this a perfect square. This is n squared plus 2, 
squared. But again, 24 and squared isn't a perfect square. But we haven't exhausted all of our options. Instead of plus 4 n squared, this middle term could be minus 4 n squared. In this case, to get back the original minus 20 n squared, we'd have to put minus 16 n squared on the outside. And okay, now this is what we're looking for. This is a perfect square. This is n squared minus 2 squared. And of course, 16 n squared is the square of 4n. So now we do have a difference of squares. This is equal to the original polynomial. Now that we have that original polynomial as a difference of squares, we can factor the difference of squares. Recall that factorization is the first term minus the second term, and then multiply that by this first term plus the second term. So the factorization looks like this, n squared minus two minus four n, and then n squared minus two plus four n. Now it's tempting to say, okay, we've shown that this polynomial is equal to a product of two factors, so it's not composite. Of course, that's not sufficient because the factors could be one and whatever the number is. So what remains to be proven is that neither of these factors are equal to plus or minus one. If we show that this polynomial can always be written as this product where neither factor is plus or minus one, then we've demonstrated that the polynomial always outputs composite numbers for integer values of n. And to show that neither of these factors can be equal to plus or minus one is a straightforward contradiction argument. Remember that we're assuming n is an integer, and that's where we're gonna run into a problem here. Essentially, we have four cases. I'll show you two of them because they're all more or less the same. We have to show that this factor can't be plus or minus one, and we have to show that this factor can't be plus or minus one. For starters, let's show that this factor can't be positive one. Suppose, on the contrary, that it is equal to positive one, and we'll show that this simply cannot be the case. If n squared minus two minus four n was equal to positive one, well, what's the issue here? Well, we could rewrite it as n squared minus 4n minus 3 equals 0, and then apply the quadratic formula to solve for n. That would tell us that n is equal to negative b, so positive 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus 4ac. 4 times a times c is negative 12, so if we subtract that, we get positive 12. And then, of course, all of this is over 2a, which is just 2. Then 4 over 2 is 2, so this is 2 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 2. 28 has a factor of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So we can take that out of the square root, which will cancel out with that 2 in the denominator. Thus, we'll have 2 plus or minus. Once we take the 4 out, what's left in the square root is 7. 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. What's the problem? Well, remember, this is n, and n is supposed to be an integer, but this is not an integer. So then, as long as n is an integer, we've shown that this factor absolutely can't equal 1, because it equaling 1 forces n to not be an integer. And returning to our factorization, the argument is similar in the other cases. Just for one more example, let's show that this factor can't be negative 1. Again, we'll suppose that, on the contrary, it is equal to negative 1 and show this can't be the case. If this does equal negative one, well, we could rewrite this as n squared plus four n minus one is equal to zero, and then apply the quadratic formula. So we'd have that n is equal to negative b, so negative four, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus four ac. So that's gonna be plus four, all over 2a, which is 2. Negative 4 over negative 2 is negative 2, so this is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 20, but we can take 4 out of that. The square root of 4 is 2, so we would have 2 times the square root of 5, because we did have 20, but we write that as 4 times 5 and take the 4 out of the square root as 2. And in the denominator, we have 2. We see those things cancel out. And what we're left with is that n is equal to negative 2 plus or minus root 5. 
five. And again, this can't be because this is not an integer. So if n is an integer, then this factor absolutely can't be negative one because that would force n to not be an integer. And of course, the other two cases are similar. We've thus shown that whenever n is an integer, this polynomial can be written as this product of factors where neither factor is plus or minus one, which immediately implies the number must be composite. So that's a very boring polynomial to kick off your Sunday morning, a polynomial that only ever outputs composite numbers. Let me know if you had any questions in the comments or an alternative solution, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and unsold the table If Texas instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet Faded Psychosomatic habits, why you're so sick